Welcome to the very first Metadata Showdown, where in this corner, we have a website that has a lot of explaining to do for their metadata, and in this corner, we have another website that just makes me all warm and fuzzy inside when I look at it, because it's so good. So with that, let's go and see if we can learn what makes a good and a bad metadata example. Let's go check it out. Whether you know this website exists or not, it is very popular on YouTube. In fact, a lot of people seem to be buying off of this, this website called Wish. I cringe every time I see someone buy off of this. So what you're going to see here on the screen is I've just gone to Wish. By the way, it's very strange. You have to sign in in order to even see what's on Wish. Also very strange. But here you'll see the metadata. So I'm going to walk through what you're seeing on the screen. So you can see the overview, you can see a number of images. Okay, all of this seems very normal. This is also what you might see if you go to Amazon. Then you'll see the main product image, and then you're going to see the name of the product. So let's just walk this through. 50, 100, 200 LEDs. Which one is it? LED, again, Outdoor solar lamp string lights. Okay, I guess that's that's okay. 5, 10, 20, which one? Millimeter, hopefully. Solar string lights. Pretty sure they said that. Eight modes. Okay, now there's some more information. Solar powered. Pretty sure they said that. USB powered. Wait, is it solar or USB powered? Or is it both? Copper wire fairy lights. Okay. Waterproof indoor, outdoor. So both. Lighting for home, garden, party, path, lawn, wedding, ceiling, floor, window, banister. Do we have to list every single way you could use these lights? Apparently so. Oh, and also DIY decoration. Two sizes, although I'm Fairly certain that three sizes have been mentioned thus far, and it's USB and solar energy. Whew, take a breath after reading that. This is a very good example of what not to do in metadata. So this metadata field could be, um, it looks like a product description, but I think it's just the product title. What is the title? What is the name of this thing? Uh, you'll see there's only one review. That's another piece of metadata. How many reviews, so it's a count. So it's important when you're going through metadata to understand what kind of metadata it, is it. Is it a string, meaning it's just a bunch of words? Is it a count, meaning it's an it's a integer or a number? Not that much detail, although this was only reviewed two days ago, which I would say is highly suspect since it just now went on sale. And now you get into the description. So the description is a laundry list of stuff. All of this would be considered unstructured. Descriptions, abstracts, synopses, those are usually unstructured data. The problem with unstructured data, there is a time and a place for unstructured data. It's not that useful for search, um, although if you do have your search calibrated to look at the unstructured text, you are really depending on string matches or keyword matches. Uh, what if I wanted to be able to search on any of these very specific specifications? Because they're all just jumbled together in essentially one field called description, I can't really do much with it other than mine it for keywords, which is all a search engine is going to do. Now, let's go look at a better example. I have just always been impressed with the way Wayfair does their metadata. So here I'm looking for string lights. Again, I'm trying to do more of an apples to apples comparison. And you can see, you can search on all these different filters. Now let's go back to Wish. Can I even filter on anything? No, I, I can't filter on anything. Uh, it's not surprising. So here I can look for indoor, indoor, outdoor, only outdoor. I can look for overall length. I can look for the different types. So fairy lights compared to globe. This, you can see how very detailed plug-in, battery, solar. I can see how much time and effort went into this. So when you're looking at this kind of metadata, what it means is 
if I go to any of these products, this data is captured not just in the schema, which is the metadata part. Is it a name field? Is it an LED field? Is it a, a chord type field? But there's also a lot of control within the field. So with your name, if it's just a name field, then there's not a lot of structure. It's just a string of characters. But if you have a first name and a surname or your last name, those are very distinct distinct ways of looking at metadata. And what that means is you can find people based on their last name, surname, or their first name. So let's go and check out one of these. Ina's 15 inch outdoor LED solar powered 10 bulb novelty string light. That tells me a lot. So I know it's 15 inches, uh, outdoor LED solar, uh, looking at 10 bulbs, also good, it's telling me exactly how much I'm getting from it. And it is a novelty string light. So here it actually says that I can look, I can shop by rating for this specific vendor. So I can actually say, okay, I think this is really cool. I wanna see what else has been um, provided by Bungalow Rose. And you can see that they have a very high rating, which tells me that if I click on this, also that in and of itself is a decision. Somewhere, someone at Wayfair found that users want to be able to quickly search on the provider. So if I wanted to do that, I would click on this and it would perform a search on Bungalow Rose for me. And it even looks like Bungalow Rose has its own little sub shop inside of Wayfair. So if I'm a dedicated customer, to the Bungalow Rose brand, Wayfair seems to have found this is something people are going to want to, you know, be dedicated to. So they have given it dedicated space in their in their uh, interface. Let's go back. Gives me the price. It has to be dynamic. You have to have this be dynamic. If you were looking at product in Canada, it would have this in Canadian dollars. Or if you were looking at this in um, in the UK, it would be in pounds or in euros if you're in Europe. So it has to be dynamic. Being able to dynamically update the price and with exchange rates is a very complex piece of metadata. Too complex to go over in this video, but it's something to note. Tells you a little bit about shipping. Again, this is dynamic. So it's looking at the date. It's looking at geographically where my interface, uh, my browser is saying that I'm physically located. And then this is really interesting. The product overview is, is a section. It's not just a laundry list of things like it was on Wish. And you can see there is a description, right? It is it is there, it's, it's unstructured, right? But it's in a defined area. We can see weights and dimensions. You can see these are all very uniform. Again, pounds. Uh, and inches, if you're not in the US, that will be different. So that also has to be dynamic. And oftentimes when you can look at the metadata and you can also see on the main interface over here that these, see right here, overall length, these lengths can be used as a filter. What that tells me is these are not just keyed in like keywords. These are actual values in what's called a controlled vocabulary, a controlled list of values that you can enter in when creating your metadata. This is very, 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 very important and a large part of information architecture. And we're gonna go over in the next video some standards to keep in mind when you are creating a controlled vocabulary. So you can go into specifications and you can see there's so many specifications. It's very well laid out. It's very structured. The more structure you have, the smarter you can make your interface, the smarter machine learning you can do. Anything that's structured is better than unstructured unless you're trying to get at the human component. Remember the natural language that we talked about in the last video? That comes mostly from unstructured data, the words that everyone uses, the words that people you know, use to chat with each other. That and a few other you know, big use cases is where you would wanna use unstructured data. But for something like true metadata for product discovery, Having more structure is always best. And even when you do have unstructured data, 
if you have it in a structured field, that gives you all the more leverage to use that in other applications. Okay, so you can see it even tells you a little bit about the shop. Remember, trustworthiness is a big deal. This is giving me information about the vendor so that I can make sure that I trust them to give me what I'm looking for. If I go back to Wish, this isn't what I searched on, Wish. Let's go down to the bottom though, just to see what they have. So again, the description is a big old jumbled mess. Here you can see sold by NK Beauty. It's saying that they have a lot of reviews, so maybe they're good. Let's go, nope, that doesn't. So, okay, let's visit their store. Maybe that'll tell us something. So here, now I am on their shop, their dedicated shop on Wish. I can see their products, but I can't find anything else about them. So, okay, they're a seller since 2017 and it looks like they have high ratings, but why? All right, so let's go back. Oh, I feel better. I'm back on Wayfair. Oh, my data anxiety is gone. <laughs> now notice, um, if I type in, I noticed this when I did my original search. So solar string lights, outdoor solar string lights. Let's, let's go with that. So you notice it actually parsed out so parse means it looks at what I typed in and it pieces out the information in a certain way. It, it noticed that my power source that I wanted was solar and it added that as an automatic filter as well as indoor and outdoor because I put outdoor. That's really smart. Oh, and it has another one. What else did it do? Oh, and another location which is outdoor. So they're trying to be safe. I think this is amazing. I, I think this is really smart. So this kind of description is very short to the point. It gives me as much information as I need to make a decision, even without having to look at all of the details. That is the number one learning from this video. When you are making a product label, make it short, quick, to the point, and have just enough information that I can make a decision. Remember the user persona, I can make a decision on on this item without going into the detail. All right, so with that, let's go back over. Okay, so that was a, a little bit of a deep dive um, on the basics of metadata. We are going to go much more in depth in each of these areas. And with that, there is no task for this week. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you have any suggestions for upcoming videos, please provide in the comments below. And stay tuned in a few weeks, I am going to be having a live event where we will all chat together uh, and you get to ask your questions of me. I have uh, an extensive background in information architecture so if there are things that we haven't gone over in the videos yet that is the time to come and ask and I'd love to talk to you. So with that, catch you later.